which has been proposed by Councilman Shadid and Councilman White. Councilman Shadid, sorry. Your Honor. Councilman White. Your Honor. Yes, Pat. I'd like to make a comment on this. I don't feel real overly strong about this, but I think this resolution may be unnecessary. And I've been on the council for six years now, and I've never heard a councilman ask for a deferral that had a good reason attached to it that was ever disapproved. So I think this goes a step beyond what we really need to do. The second aspect that concerns me a little bit is the automatic aspect of the request for deferral. I think anything that's automatic raises the potential for abuse to go forward. And for those reasons, I would be opposed to adopting this ordinance. All right. Comments or questions? Well, in response to that, I think Councilman Shadid had a good reason to ask for a continuance two weeks ago. What we're trying to do, what the effort is, is to try to make this a little bit less personal, a little bit formalized, so that other people don't get to decide whether I have a good reason or not. Historically, this council has let me decide whether I had a good reason or not for a continuance. That's been the way it's done for 25 years here. If I said I needed a continuance, or if Larry said he needed a continuance, or if Pat said he needed a continuance, there wasn't a challenge to whether or not what my motives were, or whether I had a, quote, good reason or not. It was just automatically done as a matter of courtesy. We're now meeting every other week. So the idea that delaying something a week, we're delaying everything a week, or every other docket is delayed a week by the fact that we go on a summer schedule. So a one-week delay, based on courtesy to me, I'm just hard-pressed to find a good reason that anyone would vote against it. I'm disturbed because people would find it. It reminds me of another matter that's been before the council for a long time, and that is on this matter, people just want to vote no, and we're going to look for a reason to vote no. It's been watered down to the point it's very simple, and it seems to me it's just a matter of courtesy to do it. Anybody else? Councilman Shadid? Well, I'm not sure that there's ever going to be a good time for this, but I just want to relay that the purpose of it is to delay conflict. I mean, I may be pouring gas on the fire right now, but one of the cardinal rules in conflict resolution is if there's a matter of contention which is subjective in nature, in which there's repeated conflict, then the parties should agree to a policy in writing and refer to that document rather than repeatedly engaging each other. And we've had multiple, we've had four council meetings in which we're talking about whether to have a continuance or not. We've had people voting against continuances with as many as three councilors asking for a continuance. We've had reports in the media. And so about the denial of a deferral, I just, it doesn't really matter whether this passes or fails. Either way, it helps me. It helps to decrease conflict, I think, because then I understand where we stand. I think the Vitagraph property was a good example of the absolute need for the ability to catch something and ask for a continuance. We did that in May. It's now August, and they're still negotiating with the city over a financial matter that, frankly, I think should have been resolved before it came to the council. That was supposed to all be wrapped up long ago. We came up with a three-hearing resolution to try and address that. It was clear that that didn't have support, so we have whittled it down to its most anemic, least common denominator state, based primarily on the comments that were made at council on May 31st. Pat said there's a clear avenue to do exactly what Councilor Shadid wants to do without adopting a resolution, and that's to ask for a deferral. Meg said we have a process in place. We have the ability to defer any document we want, and I don't see the system as broken. I don't see the need to fix it. With something that's place-specific, all you need to do is continue it. You don't need to have three hearings. You can just defer it for as long as you need. 
Gary, the system we've been using has worked very well for years and years. Now, if you have questions or you want to change something or you don't like what's in that document once you see it, I've never known that we haven't deferred it when it has been requested and deferred it multiple weeks if we need to hash it out, which we've done, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a problem with deferring anything that a council member doesn't feel comfortable voting on if they have a reason that they saw something. Again, I can live with however this vote goes. If it passes, then I know I can get a continuance. If it fails, I'm not, and I can't get back, I'm in Boston, I'm not going to call Jim Couch and Pete White. I know that if I spend a good amount of my vacation getting ready for a council meeting and I want to be here, I just need to get here. I don't need to do, it helps me understand the ground rules. And because of the differing, I just need to know the ground rules. My goal is to maximize transparency, to give maximum critical evaluation of the contracts and the methodology of the studies that we're using and to maximize public awareness and deliberation. Being able to get a continuance like this would be a tremendous help. It would be an inconvenience if I can't, but it's not the only way to get that information out, and I can live with however the council votes. Thanks. It just seems to me, and Ed and Pete, either one of you can answer, it just seems to me that to limit council discretion, and our charter is so designed on council having discretion. And that's, I'm okay with that. It's just that it seems that for the last 25 years, the council has. So if we're now moving into a system where the majority of the council has the discretion to decide when and when we don't have a deferral, that's fine. I can live with that. I just want to know that that's, we're now moving from 25 years of history to a new policy, and I can live with that. I just want to know. I think what we're doing is the lack of a policy. I mean, we do not have a policy on a deferral. I mean, I think council has the discretion to have a deferral or not. And so I wouldn't reflect this as the lack of a policy or having a policy or a new policy. I just think it's the lack of a policy and the council discretion that our charter has kind of allowed the council to gather. And certainly there's, you know, there's history based on this. But your departure from that meeting, it felt different that day because, you know, none of us know where we're going to be in two weeks. And, you know, those of us that were there wanted to vote. And I don't mean to speak for others, but speaking for myself, we never know when we're going to get called away from a meeting. And by granting the deferral for you might have caused someone else to not be able to vote. We don't necessarily know, you know, a week or two ahead of time. So I certainly hope you don't think it's an affront at you if we just, if the votes don't line up for you because I don't think it feels that way. It certainly doesn't feel that way to me. But I just hate to see the council's discretion limited on something like this. It's just why I intend to vote against it. Any other comments or questions? Mayor, I would urge that that's not the case at all. The council, we have had a policy. We have had a policy. And we're now changing, we're now very formally changing that policy. We're now saying you've got to get five votes every, you've got to, you have to be concerned about that. We've never had to do that before. I mean, literally never had to do it before, ever. But we've always, and if you say you want to make it, you don't want it to be personal, it's hard for me to take it any other way than personal because it's never happened to anybody else but Councilman Shadid. It's never happened to me. It's never happened to another person sitting on this horseshoe. Not one time has it ever happened. So if you don't want, if it's not personal, then it's just an amazing coincidence. But I'm really, I'm emotional about it. I think it's very unfair. I think, I'm not sure I understand it. I think it is a line in the sand that does not have to be drawn. And I think much of the conflict that's been going on the last three or four months has been just that. It's just been a line in the sand that's unnecessary. And we have prided ourselves, and I've been one that talks about it every time I have an opportunity, about the collegial nature of this group, about the personal relationships in this group. And when I see them start to deteriorate over something I don't even understand, I'm troubled by that. And I hope it isn't personal. But if it isn't, it's an amazing coincidence, it seems to me. I just want to say one thing. Even if it is personal, even if it is, it's okay. And I'm afraid that, we talked about in Minneapolis, I'm afraid that, I talked about with Pat, I'm afraid that all of us may have lived in the best of times. We have tremendous adversity heading our way. 
We've got to work together and paddle the boat together. Whether this passes or fails, it just – it helps me, and I think it will decrease conflict, and I'm ready to move on. Thanks. Any other comments before we vote? Yeah, David and Pat. Yes. First of all, just a couple of questions. The resolution would just provide for a one-meeting delay or continuance, so at the next meeting we'd vote. And at that second meeting, no other counselor could request a delay. Could you only get one? It could be requested at the subsequent meeting, and it would be your discretion to grant it or not. And at the first – at the first setting, you would have an automatic continuance unless counsel moved to suspend the rule by six votes. Okay. Excuse me, by two-thirds of the quorum. Subsequently, at the next meeting, some other counselor could request the same continuance? Could, yes. Not the same one. It wouldn't be an automatic one. Oh. It can only be at the first setting of the document. That's what I was thinking. Correct. That's fine. Okay. Well, if I can continue on, and I know I'm really looking forward to the other more senior members of the council to provide some guidance, but, I mean, I would support this just to put this behind us and let us get back to the business that I think people elected us to focus on. This has created and is continuing to create a lot of discussion, animosity, and that's not necessary. And if by allowing this, hopefully it won't be used that often. If this gets it behind us and we can get back to focusing on what we're really supposed to be doing, I'm all for that. And I'll just leave it at that for the time being. Thank you. Pat, and then Skip. Your Honor, I would just say that I appreciate Councilman Schutte's remarks. I think they're very mature and on point. We have the authority right now to defer an item any time we want to. And the thread that came through in several of the comments that Councilman Schutte read was for a good reason. And I think that's important. I think if we defer something, there ought to be a reason for that deferral, not just because it automatically can put it off for a week, because I think that opens the door, as I said earlier, for abuse. And I know there's nothing personal here except I just think that we've functioned this way for years. I probably hold the record for a deferral on this council. I had one item deferred for over two years. And it worked. The people who were objecting died. But anyway, I wouldn't suggest that as a good alternative. But the council went along because there was a reason for that deferral. We had traffic studies to do. We had an opportunity to negotiate a possible settlement. And so there was valid reasons for that deferral. And I think the council has always been willing to consider valid reasons for deferral. And when I've made a motion for that, we explain the reason why, and the council went along with it. So I think that mechanism is available, and it's been used frequently, and it's a standard practice we've had for years around here. And I think we ought to continue that. All right. Skip? Well, first of all, I would like to thank Councilman Greenwell in reference to his comments, because I think that goes directly to the heart of this issue. I'm sorry. I apologize. I would like to thank Councilman Greenwell in his comments, because I think it goes directly to the heart of this issue. And we all have, unfortunately, suffered a great deal of controversy, negative as it may be. It has been real that what happened here several weeks ago was something that was unprecedented. And the press can't change it. The citizens can't change it. The only body that can change what happened and make the days go better from here on out is us. Whether or not you call it personal, whether or not it's about, you know, when you ask for a continuance and I may not like it, you know, to me that's all downsizing the issue. This issue blew up in a way that, you know, was just, you know, it was very unfortunate for all of us. But we did it. We created that. 
And when we talk about this issue of continuances, as Councilman Ryan said, and I have been the recipient also, but when it's something that's ward specific, I don't think none of us pay attention to if Councilman Kelly, if it's in Ward 7, he wants to defer this for another, you know, 30 days, 90 days. You know, it's been a respected granting of that continuance, just like Councilman Ryan. If he continued something, deferred something for a year, that's in his ward. It's something that is mindful to him, and he has oversight over it, and the citizens in his district and his ward is coming directly to him. The problem, I think, is, is when we had this issue that's a global issue that's all over the city of Oklahoma City, and one of us may have some questions about it or have some issues with it, and with the rest of us know from behind the scene politicking that that individual is against it. Or Councilman Kelly may not be supporting this, but if he asks for a continuance, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to support it. And I think that's the very heart of this issue. And I think the one time, the first setting, in reference to this ordinance, I, it, I just think it, it, it goes a lot further for all of us to put some things behind us and say, you know, okay, this is what we'll do. But at the same time, when the issue comes up, and at some point in time, if either one of us still asks for a continuance, there's a respect and cordiality again that, you know, we're looking in the face of. And I just think it's not going to change, you know, that. So in, in an effort to try to bring about some, some civility on this issue, I, I just, I'm, I don't know why you wouldn't support it. If we're talking about moving forward in a way that we can all work together and have some harmony and stop bickering over a little issue about whether or not this councilman asked for a continuance and you know that his reasoning, your back of your mind, is the reason why he's asking for a continuance is because he wants to investigate some more information about an issue or you feel like that he don't support it, so you're not going to give him a little bit of support by allowing for the continuance. And I just think that it's all about, you know, those type of issues. If it's Ward Pacific, if it's in Ward 6, if it's in Ward 7, Ward 8, none of us is going to sit here and challenge each individual councilman about an issue in his or her particular ward. I haven't seen it one time since I've been here on this council. Not one time. And I think this is a way that we can put some global, you know, uh, softening to this whole issue and, and, and never have to really bring this issue back again. All right, any other comments or questions? Yeah, Larry. I wasn't going to say much, but David just said he'd appreciate some counsel from somebody who's been around a while. Other than uh, Mick and I have been around uh, this, this system the longest. Pete, of course, goes back to a, a previous life when he was very active and very involved, so he's really the senior guy. From my perspective, having been here since 2001, I, I don't think that this is needed, and I'm not going to support it. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. Councilman Shadid, do you want to make a motion? Second? All right. Motion is to uh, on item uh, F for the OCMFA. And the motion fails. Four or five. We'll adjourn the OCMFA, convenes the Oklahoma City Public Property Authority. And uh, we have the same issue on item B, so why don't we uh, have a motion then on item, the PPA item A, and then we'll vote on item uh, B separately. Move All right. Cast your votes on item A of the PPA. And it passed unanimously. Then item B, uh, Councilman Shadid, do you want to make a motion? Need a second? Okay. Item o, the B of the PPA is uh, identical to uh, item F of the OCMFA. Everyone clear on what we're voting on? All right. Cast your votes. And the motion fails five to four. Well, during the OCPPA, convene the Oklahoma City Environmental Assistance Trust.